There's no, no speed. speed control. Let's see if our speed or lock side. Yeah, it's just, you know, the new spirit. We started with a picture way back in mythology of um, Sleeping Beauties, it's called today Briar Rose. And why does this fate occur? Because they didn't invite the 13th witch to come. And so she brings an evil spell. And this is the soul, the young girl is represented in the human soul, and when she reaches puberty, she reaches sexuality age, she discovers technology in the form of the highest at that time the spinning Weaving, uh, spinning. The spinning wheel is the top of technology. And what does it do? It puts her to sleep. It pricks, it pricks her. What do we call the masculine entity that pricks? <laughs> mm -hmm. It pricks her and she falls asleep. And who can rescue her from it? Pricks. But the spirit that gets through all those briars that surrounds the oh. castle. Not the old spirit, the father, can't do it. They're all asleep as well. Perfect picture for our time. Mm -hmm. So I won't go through this because we're past time. We need to move and get up, but this is all in the uh, uh, PDFs if you want to download it. But just a synopsis of Seth and Abel versus Cain and the picture of the soul. So, and I sorry, I can't go into the temple legend. That's just too much for us today. Um, so there's a number of interesting discussion questions, um, but here we are at the end with our prior rows. So, and the statement about mythology, I just thought it would be cute to end with that. And let us... What does it say? Yeah, can you... Oh, I'll read it. My point, this is John Dominic Crossan, um, New Zealander. My point, once again, is not that those ancient people told literal stories, and we now are smart enough to take them symbolically, but that they told them symbolically, and we are now dumb enough to take them literally. Exactly. <laughs> the way we do with the Bible, too. Right. Oh, yeah. Keeley, uh, Philadelphia, and he, in the late 1800s, developed machines that apparently could begin operation through moral emanations that he could enhance through playing a violin or something. And, um, I believe Blavatsky also mentions him, and Steiner talks about him in particular about that this is a technology of the future, but it was developed as a kind of indication of where we can go. So <clears throat> I did not get to cover Prometheus in the last session, <laughs> as you may have noticed. Um, and it's, uh, so I'm going to just say a couple words. As you probably know, Prometheus looks and sounds an awful lot like Cain, or the gifts that Lucifer brings as well, to some extent. but. Cain, um, uh, Prometheus gives to humanity when Zeus wanted to destroy them because they were rebelling. He wanted, he gave to humanity knowledge of fire is what we normally hear. He also gave us the sciences and the arts. And those two things didn't used to be considered so separate. It's this Greek word techni literally translates to the arts that we use in technology and technique. So um, Prometheus is punished, and the gods work on this um, and participate. 
And so Hephaestus, who is the god of technology, builds the chains. And um, during the day, Prometheus is chained to the rock, the Caucasus rock. What is the rock? If you were to think esoterically, what's the rock? Earth, yeah. The mineral kingdom, right. And so, he can only be released from this by an initiate, who is Heracles, or sometimes called Hercules, who has to perform, of all things, 12 labors. He's got to go through 12 steps. Ooh, 12 step processes. It's a 12 step process that he goes through, and then it's still not enough. Something of Prometheus, as the representative of humanity, still has to be sacrificed. He has to give up his lower animal nature, which is the centaur within. Steiner says, in our etheric bodies, every one of us has a centaur. What's the image of a centaur? It can think like a human being, but in its lower nature, it's still animal. Hoofs. Sorry? With hoofs. With hoofs. <laughs> so Hercules has to give up his animal nature? Well, Prometheus. Prometheus as the representative of the human being. Yeah. So as a representative of the human being, Hercules is participating. Hercules is that part of us that can be initiated. So all three of these represent the human being. Prometheus is a titan. And so in this image of him chained to the rock all day long, his liver is gnawed upon by a vulture or an eagle, depending on the tradition that you're using. And then at night, it heals again. And then the day, it's gnawed upon. So we have these rhythms that Gabrielle was just giving us of this opening to the spiritual world and closing again and opening again and, and the effect it has on our organs that are etheric in nature as well. So the liver in our time is one of those organs under severe attack, mostly by things like alcohol, but also pain pills, Vicodin. We have in the United States today a severe problem of people overdosing on these pain pills. And there are the lots of threatening. Just Pardon? People, people just living in the environment, all of the oh, assault yeah. from, the, from the chemicals. Or so all, exactly, and that's the environment, the eagle, the vulture is attacking these organs. But what's interesting is this being the Christ unites himself with the earth. This sun god comes in and unites himself with the earth. And he says to one of the disciples, who is called Peter, or the rock, upon this rock I build my church. He unites himself with what in the earth is the most dead to start building the seed for the future of the universe. Now Hephaestus, the god of technology, was thrown off of Olympus by his mother, Hera. Hera throws him off of Olympus. He lands on the island of Lembos, which is where all the, not all, but many of the migrants are landing. It's an island off of Greece. And he sets up his mystery school there, mystery schools on technology and the use of fire and metallurgy. And it spreads from there across the Mediterranean area. What did his mother not like about him? He had a malformed foot. And to the gods, anything imperfect 
imperfect would be horribly ugly. She couldn't stand the sight of him because of his foot. Does that sound like a mother to you? It's fascinating, these stories. So he's eventually allowed back onto Olympus, but uh, I forgot to mention before that, he builds automatons that are able to go up and down between Olympus and Earth. So think about that in regards to the robotic units we've talked about. And what does Olympus represent? What does it mean to go to the mountain? And so automatons, they can go up to Olympus. They don't quite go all the way, I guess, but they go up and back down, surfacing between Hephaestus on the Earth and the gods on Olympus. And when Hephaestus is invited back, finally, after he's made thrones for the gods and so on, he's invited back. He rides back to Olympus on the back of a donkey. Think of when Christ Jesus enters the holy city of Jerusalem rides on a donkey as a fulfillment of Hephaestus. So we've talked about living thinking. Um, some other questions that we've touched upon are, can you get the living out of the lifeless? Or do you get the lifeless out of the living? In our modern technology world, we're at the a boundary that says, how do you get consciousness? Um, but they deny pretty much what life is. There isn't a real sense for what the difference between the mineral and the plant kingdom is. But you know, somewhere it's acknowledged, but it's not acknowledged in science. Although we have organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry, but we still don't know what life is. And in the philosophy we've been bringing here, everything begins with a living. In him is life, and that life is the light that humans have. And we come from the living to the lifeless the lifeless as a kind of precipitant that comes out of the living. We didn't touch upon um, this soul, what is the soul? We uh, might, I can't remember, I don't think we have, no, we don't have any in this one, um, so I think we had to skip it, but the uh, question of what is the human soul and how is the soul different from a spirit? I think is difficult for a lot of people today to answer since we don't know. We just kind of know the body in the mineral world, but we don't really know much about the soul. In anthroposophy, we talk about soul as where thinking, feeling, and willing are taking place. And these are the three fundamental activities of the soul life. And that these interpenetrate one another so that we can talk about how thinking to really stay with a subject needs will. And we can ask the question, do kids with their iPhones and these sort of things, are they losing this ability to have will in their thinking? And then there's another aspect to this, which is the thinking that as a kind of magic of the will lights up the will into virtue. Um, <clears throat> one of Steiner's very first words was on the um, connection uh, uh, from a spiritual perspective of what we call percepts and concepts. And that these in nature are actually united, but that um, through what we are as human beings, they become separated in, in our thinking, 